You know, last weekend in college football felt a lot like 2007. So let's talk about it. It was a crazy, crazy, crazy weekend. I mean, people losing their jobs. I think somebody could lose their job in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so let's talk. Bama, Texas. Bama, one-point survivors. Goes into Texas. It was like 100 degrees out there. Um, and they, they hang on to win. They get their act together the last couple of drives offensively. Um, and, and they win. They So, so was this... So was this a case of survive and advance and, you know, um, a win is a win? Or is this a case of uh, th th there's trouble uh, in, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama? Because if you were a Bama fan or have been paying attention to Bama, uh, they struggled a little bit last year. Uh, they overachieved in, in some people's uh, opinion last year uh, as being a rebuilding year and all uh, but they 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 struggled on the road they struggled against Florida I remember they struggled against Auburn um, but but ended up winning and and same thing here but uh you look at their schedule LSU Tennessee Old Miss, all places that uh, Alabama is going to have to travel. And uh, I think we're going to be watching. Good luck. If anybody can clean up the problems, it, it's uh, Nick Saban. But have you seen that many uh, penalties from, an, from a Nick Saban Alabama team in the last ever? Uh, good luck. Good luck. Um... Maybe get the Aflag Doug to help you. I don't know. Call Dion. <laughs> Speaking of trouble, there could be trouble in, in T-Town, but <laughs> there's tr definitely uh, trouble uh, in College Station. What the hell is going on, man? Appalachian State comes into College Station, kicks down the door and wins. And... Um, the thing is, is Texas A&M, with all that hype coming into the season, 14 points, 14 points, that ain't good. You're not going to beat, you're not going to beat too many teams, uh, this day and age, putting on 14 points. And, um, uh, just to be real, that, that, that 14 points looked like some 2014 points. And uh, so, so is Texas A&M? I mean, the people in College Station are, are asking those questions. They're asking the questions, not me. And I think we're going to get some answers next week because uh, Miami, the U, you heard of them? They used to be pretty good. Uh, it's coming to town, <laughs> and and uh, I think I may have a, a watch party, uh, and it could be called. Uh, watch Jimbo Fisher uh, lose his job. So, so I, uh, we'll see. Um, is he going to be the next Ed Orgeron without a without a ring? Uh, at least from from in the SEC, he got one in FSU. But um, just starts off. I mean, just so high <laughs> off a cliff, starting week one. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see you next week. Miami. I'm I'm gonna watch. Tell me what you think. You know who else could be watching? <laughs> uh the Scott Frost, because um Nebraska lost to Georgia Southern and then uh lost their coach. Uh they said uh, get the hell out of here. And uh, uh I'm not happy whenever a, a really, really rich person loses their, their really, really, really great job. Uh However, Cornhuskers, if you're if you're watching, uh, I can win those. I can lose. I can lose just as many one uh, one possession games or uh, one score games as Scott Frost. Maybe maybe even more. Um, 
I'm all about goals, so if you want to hand me a few million dollars and, and hire me and then fire me and hand me a few million dollars to fire me, hit me up. What do you got to lose? <laughs> you know, I mean, Nebraska, you, you're supposed to beat the teams that you're supposed to beat. Uh, nobody was really expecting Nebraska to compete for um, championships this year, but once again, a, a program with that much tradition and pride, uh, the, the fans, it, I don't think a Nebraska fan is going to watch this, but they, they, they have some of the best fans in the country. They, they know their football. They care. Um, it would be nice if, if, they, if the university cared as much as they did. Um, anyway, I'm not going to act like I know a lot about Nebraska football, but um, Trev... Trev knows football, so we'll see. Speaking of beating who you're supposed to beat, Baylor. Baylor. I mean, historically, from what I remember, nothing to nothing, nothing much. Sorry, Baylor. But you got a good coach. You got a good program. Sugar Bowls, stuff like that. You're supposed to be able to take care of business. And... BYU said, mm -mm, not not this year. Um, Baylor beaten by BYU. I d I'm not going to pretend to know a lot about BYU, but but I do know this: if they keep on winning, let's, we'll take a look at their schedule. Uh, I don't see any L's on it, but what what do we know at this point? But uh, if they keep on winning. How are, how are you going to keep them out? Yeah, Baylor, you, you, you're getting to that level where you're supposed to beat the teams you're supposed to beat. I thought BYU was one of those teams you're supposed to beat. Just saying. That's going to be a theme going forward, I have a feeling. <laughs> because the Thunder ain't heard. So we're, we're not that team. Notre Dame goes down to Marshall. Notre Dame, winless. Did, did they take an L to Ohio State and, and just a young team that wasn't able to, to move on and, and took another L to to uh, to a team they should have eaten? I mean, everybody's always said um, the big knock on Notre Dame over the last, what, 20 years or so is uh, good, but they can't win the... You're saying it if you're watching. They can't win the big games. Um, and... and I, we could talk about that term, you can't win the big games, because it's sort of like a um, move in the field, field post sometimes with certain teams. Um, but even their coach, <laughs> when he was packing his bags and going to LSU, he said, why, they said, why are you going? He said, I'm going somewhere where I can win, win the big games. Um, alluding to you cannot recruit the amount of talent um, at Notre Dame. To, to win championships, so you know he went to the to the place where I guess it's easiest to win championships. LSU, ask Ed and uh, Les and uh, Saban. So I mean, yeah, I mean you got a pretty good chance of winning if if you want to win a championship, go down to LSU, and that's what he said he was going to do. Uh, but anyway, back to my point. Yeah, the, the knock on Notre Dame is you can't win the big games, but. <laughs> Marshall ain't the big game. It may have been Marshall's big game. But, uh, Notre Dame, you're not even winning the games you should win now. That ain't good. Going on, uh, Arkansas. Winning the games that they should win. No offense, South Carolina, but, uh, uh you, you've never been that good. I mean, you had a couple years with uh, Spurrier, uh, but, and and stuff like that, but for the most part, you're historically a doormat. And Arkansas has been there in the dumps at, at, as well over the last couple of years, but, but they've had points in their history that they, they can point back to and, and say, uh, we got it done. Um, yeah, they, they may not care how they got it done, but they got it done. Um, 
And and I really like what they're building at Arkansas. Sam Pittman, I think, is a great fit for Arkansas. A lot of people didn't. I mean, he was an offensive coordinator. Uh, not an offensive coordinator, but the, the line, the offensive line coach. And he got a shot. Um, and it looks like he's 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 been a home run. And Arkansas is getting to that point where they are beating the teams that they should beat. Congratulations, Arkansas. You're, you're doing what you historically should. Speaking of that, Tennessee goes up to Pitt, Pittsburgh, whatever they call themselves nowadays, and, and won. Uh, congratulations, Tennessee. You are winning the games you're supposed to win. I mean, it's been rough over the last since the early 2000s probably uh, but, but hey you, you took care of business beating the teams you're supposed to beat that's what you're supposed to do so good good for you balls y'all suffered hopefully that was something to make you feel good um, Arkansas Tennessee they're building Kentucky uh, not very many people gave Kentucky a chance, but um, they, they're building too, and they, 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 they went into the swamp and, and they won. Um, it's sort of like they're flipping that whole narrative. I mean, historically, Kentucky, nothing to write home, home too much about, uh, at least in the recent past. But uh, they're building something. They're, they're a very physical team, and... Uh, they took care of business against Florida. Have you ever heard so much hype for one player in week one and have reality hit you in the face week two? Um, I'm a, I'm a grown-ass man, so I'm not going to hear and, like, you know, uh, really trash young adults like um, Anthony Richardson. He... Um, quarterback Florida uh, had a rough rough week uh, but I will criticize the people I'm not going to criticize him I mean like I said uh, a little past that point in my life but I will criticize the people uh, that one week into the season were, were comparing him to the likes of Tim Tebow Cam Newton no, I mean, we could play this clip back in a year and, and um, I could look like a fool. But just from what we saw week two, uh, the people that were saying that uh, looking like the fool right now. Just saying. Just saying. All right, I think that's about it. Um, let me know what you think of, of uh, my opinions. Feel free to tell me I'm stupid. I'd rather hear something back than nothing. Uh, I don't really post that much, but if you, you see this and you have an opinion, let me know. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll talk again next week. Holla!